Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me for today's devotion. If you have your Bible, and I hope you do, we are in Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Now, some of you are asking, why did we skip from uh, chapter 24 all the way over to 32? Well, remember at the end of chapter 24 yesterday, Moses left Joshua halfway up the mountain, and the people of God at the foot of the mountain, after they've already worshipped and committed themselves to God, they've already heard the Ten Commandments orally given, and Aaron and Hur are left in charge of the Hebrews at the bottom of the mountain. Joshua halfway up. Moses goes up the mountain, and he spends the next 40 days and 40 nights with God on Mount Sinai. And everything in these uh, chapters in between 24 and 32 are the regulations and the law and so on that God gives Moses for the Hebrew people about constructing the tabernacle and about offerings and other things. So we're not going to read all of, all of that. When you get to chapter 32, Moses is still up on the mountain, and God is near the end of the 40 days, and God's giving him the Ten Commandments written in stone. Remember, God wrote them with his finger, cut you know, on stone himself. Uh, chapter 32 begins with what the people of God, the Hebrews, are doing at the bottom of the mountain while Moses is up on the mountain during those 40 days. And what I want to focus on today is the importance of leadership, for good or bad, and and the serious consequences that can come as a result of failed spiritual leadership. So chapter 32, if you have your Bible in verse 1, it says, When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, Remember, 40 days up there. And so it's getting near the end of that 40 days. So they're seeing, we can't see Moses. What's happened to him? Uh, the people assembled about Aaron. Now remember, Aaron and her had been left in charge. So the, they, they gather around Aaron and they said to him, Come, make us a God who will go before us. In other words, make us an idol. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Now, remember, it had only been 40 days earlier. They had heard God uh, in thunder speak from Mount Sinai. God covered the mountain with smoke and fire, and they heard the trumpet of God, and they, they felt God shake that mountain. And here it is just over a month later, and their faith has dissipated. And so they want an idol. And in verse 2, Aaron, who's supposed to be their leader, tells them to take all their gold earrings and so on, give them to him, and, and then he fashions an idol for them in verse 4 and presents it to them at the middle of verse 4, says, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And then in verse 5, he builds an altar and and uh, says, tomorrow we're going to have a festival. We're going to have a feast of celebration. Um, but notice at the end of verse 5, tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. In my Bible, the word Lord there is all capital letters, L-O-R-D, all capital letters, which means in the Hebrew it was referring to Yahweh, the sacred name of God. That name the Jewish people would not speak because it was so sacred, so they would substitute the word Lord in its place. It was not that they were turning to some pagan God. Remember, God had told them, don't make any image of me. Here, though, they are disobeying God. They are ignoring what God said, and they are wanting an idol, not to a different God, but an idol to represent who they believe God was. Um, and uh, so they thought of themselves as still being religious and worshiping the same God, but they were going to do it through an idol. And, of course, God had told them not to do that, and he becomes very, very, very angry. Um, well, God tells Moses what's going on down at the foot of the mountain, and Moses comes down the mountain and uh, breaks the Ten Commandments. He throws the stones down, and they are shattered. He confronts the people, and there's a judgment, and, and most of the people repent, but about 3,000 who will not repent and will not uh, stop worshiping the idol are executed because God cannot allow idolatry in the nation of Israel if they're going to be his witness to the world. But I want you to notice how Moses confronts um, Aaron. 
in chapter 32, verse 21. Then Moses said to Aaron, What did this people do to you that you have brought such great sin upon them? Aaron, I left you and her in charge. Now, we don't know anything about her. He's not mentioned. We don't know where he was. Moses confronts Aaron and says, What did they do to you to get you to fail so miserably, to cause you to um, lead them into this great sin? Then Aaron explained what had happened and said, You know they're prone to evil. But in verse uh, 25, Moses speaks and says, and it says, when Moses saw the people were out of control, notice this, for Aaron had let them get out of control to be a derision among their enemies. And then Moses takes a stand and corrects the problems and deals with it. But here's, here's what I want you to see. Moses confronted Aaron for his failed leadership. He, he in some measure, lays the responsibility at the feet of, of Aaron himself, whom he'd left in charge. Now, we said the people 40 days earlier had seen God, heard God speak to Moses on the mountain. You know, they were at the foot of the mountain, and God covered the mountain. But Aaron and her, who were supposed to be leading, and the 70 elders, the 70 leaders of the Hebrew people, 40 days before this, they went halfway up the mountain, and they saw God. They, they, they caught a glimpse of the, a part of the form of God and saw his feet walking on that sapphire, on that crystal clear path, if you will. And even those who had that experience failed miserably as leaders. Um, Joshua was up on the mountain. Not all the way with Moses, but halfway. And you know, and 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 Joshua was told by Moses to wait here till I come back. And Joshua for forty days waited and never gave up. You, if you go back to chapter twenty-four, God told Aaron and her and the elders to do the same thing: stay here at the bottom of the mountain and stay faithful until I come back. Joshua remained faithful in his spot, but Aaron and the elders and the Hebrew people. They, they became afraid. They got worried. They started looking around and said, where's Moses? What's going on? And they backslid and sinned. Um, there's a reason God puts leaders in place. Now, leaders can fail, and leaders can mess up, and leaders can sin, and here Aaron did. But leaders can also do what Moses did and stand in the gap. And when the people of God are going the wrong direction, um, stand up and speak up. Aaron did not. Moses did. The 70 elders did not. Moses did. Her, we don't know anything about him, but he did not He did not do what he was supposed to do either. But Moses did. It's amazing how quickly a spiritual high, like hearing God on oh, cover the mountain and speak and thunder and trumpets or seeing the feet of God walk, it's amazing how a spiritual high can diminish so quickly. I think about students who go to a youth camp and have a great encounter, great spiritual high, get back and they're all on fire for Jesus, and then in two weeks, pshaw, happens with adults all the time. Man went to church, oh, it's a great Sunday. Then Tuesday, it's like they never encountered Jesus Christ. Spiritual highs can fade quickly, and it's dangerous when that happens. We need, we need more than a spiritual high, we need a faith that doesn't quit, a faith that waits, a faith that lasts, a faith that endures. And we need spiritual leaders in the home. We need spiritual leaders in the church. We need spiritual leaders among the people of God who will protect the people of God from themselves and from the enemy on the outside who's always trying to deceive them. Um, today, our church needs, churches, church, God's, God's church in America today needs leaders who are willing to speak the truth about sexual ethics, whether it's homosexuality or gender identity, but it's also about adultery and divorce and... Uh, um, Spiritual leaders among the people of God who are willing to speak out on the tribalism that is so prevalent in our culture that comes into the church. And, and so we can't see the sin of our own group, and all we see in the other group is their sin. 
You know, the tribalism that says unless you're a Republican, you can't be a Christian, or if you're not a Democrat, you can't be a Christian, and making everything totally black and white. We need spiritual leaders who confront that kind of thinking, um, who can call out the sin of a Democrat or a Republican. Those are some of the sins that our church is guilty of today. I'm not talking about my church alone. I'm talking about the church in America. Um, because if we don't, as spiritual leaders, stand for all the truth, we will compromise some of the truth for power and for wins. And that's never a godly thing to do. Spiritual leaders matter. And that includes spiritual leaders who are willing to stand up against the very people they are leading and say, we're not going that way because that way is not the way of God. Everybody needs that. I need that. You need that. So that's the word for today. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow.